Hi guys, I thought you might be interested to see this. Um, this is a demonstration of PC Anywhere version 5 for DOS uh, running on a Mr. FPGA uh, using the AO486 uh, core. Uh, so, why PC Anywhere? Because uh, PC Anywhere back in the uh, back in the day, back in the early 90s really, uh, was used quite quite often for remote control purposes, uh, dial-up hosts, that kind of thing, uh, before uh, VPN access uh, became more, more prevalent, more common. So if we go into our list of computers on the MISTA, and we come down to PC, which is the AO486 core, let's fire that up, CD into the AW directory, which is the PC Anywhere directory, and run aw now in this case what we're going to do is we're going to act as the client so we're going to connect to another host computer uh, the host computer in this case is actually another mr fpga uh, using the ao486 core uh, wi-fi modem ms dos 622 and pc anywhere version 5. the only difference is that's that's configured to uh, to act as a host at the moment okay and this machine we're going to use as the host so we've got something to connect to. Uh, this is actually another Mr. FPGA. I'll just zoom it out slightly. So uh, it just happens to be in an Amiga 500 plus case. And uh, if you've seen some of the other videos, you may well have seen this already. Okay, so uh, we're using the AO486 core on here, and we're also using MS DOS 622 and PC Anywhere version 5. So basically the same build as the machine uh, upstairs that we're going to be using as the remote the client so if we run up aw on there basically all we need to do here is go into be a host and select begin host operation and wait for a connection or you can literally run aw underscore host from the, uh, the command line and once it's initialized the modem there it has uh, waiting for a connection job done that's it so from the uh, from the remote end we'll now be able to connect to this machine and that's basically it for the uh, for the host side pretty simple so I'll show you some of the settings. I won't show you everything because it's it's not really relevant. Um, if we go into configure, I have to put in my password and my set previously. Okay, have a quick look at the system hardware. In this case, we're using a modem, albeit it's a, it's a Wi-Fi modem, so it's actually going to connect over the network rather than using um, an actual dial-up uh, with a phone line. So there you go, you can see uh, that's using Serial Com 1. Uh, it's using Hayes compatible modem definition file. It's set for 115, 200. Uh, it's using RTS CTS. It's going to initiate the connection when it sees a modem response and it's going to terminate or end the connection when it sees the uh, DCD drop, data carrier detect drop. Uh, worth pointing out that the number of rings that it's set to answer on is set to 10. Uh, the default is actually one, and there's a reason I've set it to 10. Uh, it, could be, it could be set to five, but it doesn't really make any difference. Essentially, the reason it's set at a higher number is because the Wi-Fi modem will automatically answer the call when it sees an incoming um, connection on port 23, Telnet. Um, so that'll answer the call, and then once PC Anywhere sees traffic, essentially, uh, it'll then pick up the beat and carry on the conversation. And by setting PC Anywhere at a higher number, it means that um, the uh, the two things, the Wi-Fi modem and PC Anywhere, won't start conflicting with one another. That's basically the reasoning behind it. Okay, so if we come back out of there... Um, there's not much else you need to see. So what we wanted to select here is call a PC Anywhere host because the other machine is actually a PC Anywhere host. And we're going to connect to a host, and here's one I prepared earlier. So if we just call that, you can see there that it's using its IP address as the, uh, the phone number to dial. And basically, it's gonna pass that to the Wi-Fi modem, and the Wi-Fi modem will then in turn establish um, a telnet connection to the, uh, the destination. And you can see there actually it's done the IP address with port 23, which is um, 
the default port for Telnet and it's connecting there at 115 200. Okay, and up it comes, and we can see there we've got the uh, the C prompt from the host machine. Uh, we can get a directory listing up there. Now there are some limitations um, in terms of what you can do. Anything that's uh, particularly graphically intense probably won't work. So I wouldn't recommend trying it for gaming. Uh, certainly not one one five two hundred, but um, we should in theory be able to start up a copy of Windows. So here's Windows 3.11 or Windows for Workgroups. And you can see here, this is indicating that we've got a PC Anywhere session active. And if we were to go into, I don't know, let's try some of the accessories here, something simple like right. There you go, up comes right and we can A simple document in there if we wanted to or anything else that's available to us in Windows 3.11 <laughs> okay and just for the hell of it we'll try a game of solitaire okay I'm not going to play the whole thing we'll just prove a point there you go okay and we'll come out of there that's fine and when we're done, we can exit Windows, preferably. And once we're finished with our session, the hotkey sequence to uh, get the PC Anywhere menu up, unless you change it, the default certainly is Control and the right shift key. And that'll bring up a menu there. There's some other options in there. So if we wanted to chat with a host user, we could and whatever else. Um, but uh, you know, if you're if you're inclined to have a play with it yourself, you can take your time and check out some of the other features. Anyway, once you're done, end session, and then you've got some some other options in terms of how the uh, the host machine is going to behave. So we'll in this case just say yeah, host waits for another call, and that'll effectively reset the host and um, reset the host modem as well, and leave it sitting there waiting for another connection. And once it's done at uh, the remote end, so at my end, it should then go back to the menu. And we can come back out of there and then we could connect to another host or an online service or, or whatever. In this case, we'll, we'll just finish up. So hopefully that was uh, of some interest. Um, it could be useful. I don't know what for, it's kind of old technology now, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, if you wanted to try some uh, remote control software on your Mister, or uh, any other machine for that matter. Might be worth uh, a few minutes of your time just to have a play with it. Anyway, I will catch you on the next one. Cheers for now, guys.